Second Chronicles chapter 28, verse number 1. And this is, a, this is basically the parallel to 2 Kings 15 and 16. Second Chronicles 28, verse 1. By reason, Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. But he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord like David his father. For he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel and made also molten images for Balaam. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom and burnt his children in the fire after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. So, I mean, we're really starting to understand this isn't a good guy at all. I mean, he's doing these child sacrifices. It says he sacrificed also and burnt incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. So this guy's a real piece of work, right? He's following just basically the ways of Israel. Yet we're going to see that God still protects him, not because he has respect to Ahaz at all, but for his own purposes. And, and again, I'm going to get into that. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Let's keep reading verse number five. The Bible reads, Wherefore the Lord his God delivered him into the hand of the king of Syria, and they smote him and carried away a great multitude of them captives and brought them to Damascus. And he was also delivered into the hand of the king of Israel, who smote him with a great slaughter. For Pekah, the son of Remaliah, slew in Judah an hundred and twenty thousand in one day which were all valiant men because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. So there's a little bit of insight too on what Pekah, the son of Remaliah, did in, in, in Judah. It says he slew 120,000 valiant men. I mean, those are, those are like these tough warriors. That's a lot, especially for considering this is just for, that king, for Judah, for Jerusalem, right? Um, but this is what God does when you forsake him. And as we are going to see, and as we continue to read, you know, it wasn't just the king that was wicked. The people were wicked too. Jump down to verse number 19 there in 2 Chronicles 28. The Bible says, For the Lord brought Judah low because of Ahaz, king of Israel, for he made Judah naked and transgressed sore against the Lord. And tilgath Pileser, king of Assyria, came unto him and distressed him, but strengthened him not. For Ahaz took away a portion out of the house of the Lord and out of the house of the king and of the princes and gave it unto the king of Assyria, but he helped him not. And in the time of his distress did he trespass yet more against the Lord. This is that king Ahaz, for he sacrificed unto the gods of Damascus, which smote him. And he said, because the gods of the kings of Syria helped them, therefore will I sacrifice to them that they may help me. But they were the ruin of him and of all Israel. And I'm not going to continue reading. If you keep hearing, this is the guy, this is the king that conquered people. He won in a battle and then decided to take their gods and serve them. Like, they didn't help the people that were serving that false god. And now, and now you're going to say, oh, I'm going to build this altar now unto these gods. Like, you're an idiot. The god didn't even save his own people. And... Now you're going to pick up the torch for that God, for that false God? You know, it's ridiculous. Obviously, that makes God angry, and God judges him for that. But um, to me, it's just, it's, it's just kind of stupid. But, you know, people have this, this weird, these, these weird ideas when you don't know who God is. I mean, it's just all kinds of bizarre ideas about God that are just illogical and make no sense. Without, without just understanding who the Lord is and worshiping him. I mean, it's, our, our God is a God of truth, which is why he makes sense. 